Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Join host Dan Melnick and Kasim Masood as they explore big ideas, limitless possibilities, and engage with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who dare to dream big, get inspired, motivated, and find practical tips for personal growth. Think big, dream bigger, and ignite your potential. All right, welcome to uh, Think Big with Dan and Kassam, and our guest today is Tom Lindsay. So, Tom, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us where you live and what you do for a living. Uh, yeah, my name is Tom Lindsay. I live in San Antonio, Texas, and um, I own a small women's shoe company. Awesome. So, can you just um, tell us more about your company and really just how you got the idea to start this business? Uh, okay, well, I'll start kind of giving you a little bit of my background. Um, I grew up at Neiman Marcus. So it was my first job out of college and I worked there for 24 and a half years and um, retired because it was before COVID and it was before anyone thought you could work remote. And uh, so we moved and um, I thought I was gonna be retired. That lasted about two and a half months. And um, I was going crazy. I needed something to do. So uh, my last job at Neiman's, I was the women's shoe buyer and uh, called a friend of mine who used to be at Manolo Blahnik. And, and I said, you know, we can make, we know what sells. Let's start a shoe company. Not knowing anything about the, the behind the scenes workings of a shoe company. Luckily, my, my, my business partner who was with Manolo Blahnik had some dealings with behind the scenes. So we started it and it originally started out as a white label company. And we were doing... Uh, white label for Neiman Marcus Last Call, Saks Off Fifth, Opening Ceremony, and business was great. It was booming. We kind of didn't know what we were doing. Everything was baptism by fire. There was a lot of meltdowns, um, but we figured it out. And uh, and then COVID hit, and um, and you know Neiman Marcus filed for Chapter Eleven. Sack. Everyone kind of quit paying their bills. If you'll remember so. Yeah. We pivoted and um, we started our own brand because we were very cash poor at the moment and we kind of didn't know what to do. So I was the and the, the name of the brand is Allegra James. And the way it got started was uh, I was trying to sell to a company uh, called Lulu's based out in LA. And they, she finally said to me, she goes, well, I don't want to do my label. She goes, I want to do your brand. So I texted my business partner and I said, you have two seconds to come up with a name. And she texted back Allegra James. And I said, well, we have the Allegra James brand. You'd be the first one to have it. She said, great. I love it. Let's do it. So that's kind of how our brand name got started. Awesome. So as of today, right, is your business 100% direct to consumer or are you in retail? Like, What does that breakdown look like? For you? No. So we have a website, a direct to consumer website. Um, but right now we are, uh, we're also on some websites. We're on Neiman Marcus's website, Ron Lord and Taylor's website, Saks Off Fifth. And, um, you know, we're, we're still kind of trying to recover from, you know, Neiman's not paying their invoices after chapter 11. So we're still in a very much of a growth mode. And so we're kind of all channels. Like we're actually trying to reach out to a few retailers about doing white label again, um, just for cash flow. Makes sense. So in terms of right now, like you mentioned, you're trying to sort of recoup and you have, you know, all channels, but like, what has been the most successful for you? Like, are you successful in running ads and direct to consumer and scaling that way? Or has it really been these kind of, you know, retail partners that you've spoken about? Well, right now it's been these retail partners because I've, I, we've been, as I said, you know, we were kind of cash poor. And um, so I've been using them as my marketing. So someone will see it on their website and then maybe Google the name and find my website. So, I mean, my, my direct to consumer um, has huge potential. We're just trying now to um, get the business to where we have some more working capital that we can, because we realize that marketing 
for direct and consumer is really where it's at. I mean, we have a great product. We know that. And, you know, we know the shoe business, but, you know, to really get it out there and be competitive is, has been kind of where we're lacking. And that's kind of where we're going. Makes sense. So in terms of, you said like that it's a great product. So what separates the product from your competition? Well, I mean, listen, we, you know, the, the one thing I always said, you know, is that, is that I don't have to invent anything new, you know, I just have to make my, product, you know, appealing to just a small fraction of, of who's got money to spend. And I can live happily ever after in that world. So what we kind of go after is we go after, you know, our customer, she's kind of between the ages of like 30 and 60. We try to make everything kind of what's on trend right now, maybe even about three or four months behind. And everything's about comfort as far as like heel height. So we go for low heel height because, uh, you know, there's all the all the big brands still think that everybody wants to be in a hundred millimeter pair of shoes. And every woman will tell you, she's like, I can't do it. So we do everything kind of, you know, around like 55 millimeter. The highest we go is an 85. So we try to stay... So we we try to offer them, you know, a fashion looking shoe at a great price that's comfortable and that they can, you know, go to a party in and not be uncomfortable all night. Makes sense. So in terms of scaling up, right, like what would you say is the biggest challenge that you're facing in your business that's preventing you from scaling? going and reaching your goals like getting back to where you were before. Like I said, you know, for us, it was taking that big hit um, as being, you know, one of the creditors for Neiman Marcus. They owed us quite a big invoice. Um, you know, that's life. And right. uh, we're trying to figure out a way around it. We are going to possibly reach out and try to get an investor. But, you know, it's kind of up in the air. Like, you know, it's it's still a two-man show. It's me and my business partner, and we do everything, you know. So it's we're still really scrappy and trying to figure out what's the best route for us and where we can get the most ROI for every dollar we spend. 100%. So in terms of, you know, obviously now like we're about to re- up 2023 but for 2024 like what are your goals like even in terms of revenue like i guess like average uh, monthly revenue now and what you're trying to get to if you can share that well we'll definitely we're trying to to bump up our you know our monthly revenue as any business is what we're trying to do though is we're trying to get back into that white label business because that gave us the big orders that we can then take to the factory and negotiate prices down. So then my, so my direct to consumer product can have a better margin. You know, right now we're probably pulling in, I mean, it's very modest. Like we're doing about right now, it's about 10 to $15,000 a month. Okay. So, so we're not, we're not big, you know, in, in our heyday, we were doing, you know, like, you know, 60 to 70 a month with those, those business partners. So we're kind of re we're kind of like to rebuild and we've had some good conversations with people about getting back into this white label piece of the business but you know like everything you know it doesn't happen overnight and it's really slow and you know it's never on my timeline you know right. the way I want it but and that's where you have to like just be nimble and be able to like right. wait it out so it's direct to consumer i guess basically from what i'm understanding is the concern there is kind of being able to efficiently run the ads and also making sure that you still have good margins, right? Because, you know, you want to make sure that when you're running an ad that you get a good return and also that you're not getting, you know, killed from the shipping costs. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, the margins, I mean, you know, that's, that's what any business runs on, right? right. So, yeah. And I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, granted, there's a lot of people out there that can promise a lot of stuff, you know, and that's been kind of our, our thing is that, you know, we're really trying to be, what's the word, like diligent in our homework when we when we try to take on a partner to help us with these marketing goals um right right but, but truly like our goal for 2024 is to really get to ramp up our white label business and then also get our direct to consumer business to a point where you know we're we're making the margins and able to put the money that's necessary into marketing and, and advertising because that's really what sets these online brands apart. For sure. But like, I guess when people buy from you directly, 
Because I think that, that, that you mentioned that people like might find you on a different website and they might mm-hmm. come and you know buy from you directly. In in terms of like those types of people, like you mentioned it's more kind of high quality shoes. So do you have people that often come back and buy more or is it just yeah. like a one-time buy? No, I've had a lot of repeat customers. And I think the biggest reason why is because I'm answering all emails. And um you know, if they have a question, I'm going back and forth and they have a problem with it. I'm helping them return it. And that's the, one of the biggest things that, that I've, I've gotten back is they're like, it's so your your customer service was so amazing. And that just stems from growing up at Neiman Marcus where, you know, you know, the phone rang, you picked it up, you got an email, you answered it within like 10 minutes. And, um, you know, there's no chat bots, there's nothing like that. So I think the fact that some people have gotten like a real person when they've bought from me or had an issue, um, then they'll come back. Right. Because like they're calling you and you're the founder and, and you're making it right. Like it's not like to your point that they're calling. And I've seen certain companies where they have a conflict and they don't answer the phone. They don't respond to email because they don't want to deal with it. And to your point, it's not how you run a, a successful business. Right. And the thing is, you know, yeah, granted, I don't want to take a return back. You know, that's the last thing I want to do. But, you know, I know that if somebody has an issue or I'm not getting back to them, like they're never gonna, they're never gonna come back and visit. So it just behooves me to like, you know, get back to them, make it as easy as possible, you know, offer them something in the process. I always say, I'm sorry, this didn't work out, but here, let me give you a discount code in case you want to try something new again. And usually it works, you know, they'll try again at some point. So do do you have like a lot of different um, varieties of product lines or is it just like one product? Like what does that look like for you? No. So we kind of do, we come out with like about eight styles a quarter. Um, so we try to like stay within the fashion calendar. You know, it's tricky because the stores, um, that, so they're on the fashion calendar as well. But there's also this whole buy, buy now, wear now mentality. So I've kind of got to like walk that tightrope. Like, you know, I've got to offer summer shoes in summer. But if you go to a retailer, those have already been marked down and then they're starting to bring in fall. So I've, I tried, we try to do things that are a little bit seasonless. I can kind of be worn anytime, you know, granted, you know, there's boots and like, you know, sandals that can't be, but, you know, I just make sure that I buy less inventory of those kinds of things. And then, you know, the things that really work, we try to make sure we have on hand at all times. Right. I mean, I, I think, you know, obviously, because you mentioned earlier that you come from a buying background. So it's pro- I, I feel like being a buyer, there's always these challenges of like, how much product do you order? Right. And you don't know if it's going to sell. And if it doesn't sell, then you have to like really uh, mark it down. Like, how do you balance those things out? You know, I've always said, it, you know, it's you have to look at the numbers because, you know, it's like 50 percent taste level. Like, and you know, I just draw from what I used to know was best sellers when I was a buyer. And the other 50 percent is the numbers. And, you know, if you're if you're selling something quickly and it's blowing out, it's not coming back, you know, then you kind of start playing on that. And what other iterations of that can you do? Can you make it more sellable by making it a lower heel? Can you, you know, so you sort of like ask yourself those questions. And, um, you know, even if there's a style you love, it's not selling. I mean, if it's, if there's no traction, it's it's not going to change in a few months. You know, right. it is what it is, and you've got to just move on. So if something's not selling. Like you'll sometimes even send it back to the factory and have it like be updated, or like change the heel, or is it just no. more of like that when you like iterate and make like like the, the uh, next version, like the say, next, okay. yeah, the okay. next generation of, yeah, no, there's no sending back to the factory. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's why we've got to, you know, I, I try to be very, you know, cautious in what I'm buying and how I'm buying it. And, you know, and also the sizes come in too. Um, in fact, so I look at it like a lot of percent to totals and, you know, kind of do the math on everything and come up with my best guess. And, you know, I've had some big wins and I've had some big losses too. So, right. For sure. Yeah. Buying can be a gamble. I mean, it was so what happened obviously over COVID. It was a very, like, just everything was different during that time. I think, you know, lots of buyers really suffered. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely changed everybody's like uh, history of looking at the numbers, you know, because it went from everybody at home. And so they all got online and shopped. And so you basically had to, so really what the people that were successful, you know, looked at two years ago when coming out of COVID to make their purchases instead of looking at the time during COVID. 
And I think that's where a lot of big box realtors, retailers got in trouble, like like Target. You know, they way overbought after COVID. For sure. So what would you say is the one biggest piece of advice that you wish you knew before you started this company? You know, that that's a great question. And I'll tell you something. Had I known how hard it was going to be, I probably would have talked myself out of it. So um, so maybe I'm glad like going into it kind of blind. But, you know, I guess the biggest advice is you have to be patient. You have to be patient and you have to like be diligent and you have to, you know, know that there are, there's no quick fix. You know, there's no golden ad or something. And so I guess, I mean, what I wish I had known um, when starting it, was I guess I would you know how hard it was going to be um, sure but it's been incredibly rewarding as well you know I mean right. every time I want to quit I then say well I can't quit you know right quitter yeah yeah I mean at the end of the day right you have a good uh, momentum and you have people that love your products with people that buy it I think to your point you know it's going to take time and sort of just a lot of it is word of mouth right because the mo- biggest challenge I feel like for lots of companies just brand awareness, right? People don't know that you exist. And once they find out about you, that they're more than happy to buy and come back and buy more. But it's a huge challenge for lots of companies. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, and listen, I'm sure there are some companies out there that have had like a viral moment and their companies explode, but that is, it's like buying a lottery ticket. Exactly. Exactly. So if we're going to chat again in one year from now, where do you see things going for the business? Well, hopefully I'll be doing a lot more business per month. But, you know, I know I hope to have, um, you know, my direct to consumer business um, thriving. I hope to have this white label business up and running again for multiple big box retailers. And um, yeah, I mean, I just hope to be doing a lot more revenue than I'm doing right now monthly, kind of back to where I was in 2017. Yeah. And that's exciting. And we're rooting for you. So somebody watching this wanted to reach out. Do you mind sharing your company website or social media handles? Best way to get in contact with you? Uh, yeah. So our company is, uh, the shoe brand is Allegra James. So it's um, allegrajames.com. Um, and then our Instagram is Allegra James Collection. Awesome. Well, Tom, thank you so much for your time today. And yeah, we're um, rooting for you, as I said. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.